Audiobooks with Kyle Snyder. Good morning, everybody. I thought I would just do a longer section of behind the scenes of audiobook recordings so you can see more of what just the whole process or process looks like. So this is a book I'm working on. Obviously, it's going to be coming out. Well, I'm going to be wrapping it up next next week, give or take. And then uh should be done on Audible before the end of June. And don't worry, no spoilers. Well, if there are, I'll, I'll bleep them out so you don't hear them. Anyways, enjoy. <clears throat> Let me figure. Now that he was in the shade of the throne's low silver cloth baldit... Look at that. You get to find out already. Baldachin. What is that? I don't know all the words that I need to know. So this is what I do. Uglish. Baldachin. Bolar, there's a beautifully carved baldachin. Bald oh, baldachin. Ah, and then we'll just double check. Baldachin. Merriam-Webster drinks of water. Baldican. Baldican. All right. I learned a new word today. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. All right. Do it again. <clears throat> <clears throat> now that he was in the shade of the throne's low silver cloth baldachin, I did it again. Figure. Now that he was in the shade of the throne's low... Neat figure. Now that he was in the shade of the throne's low silver cloth baldachin, the white prince finally drew the crimson hood back off his head, uncovering his albino hair, which was falling down to his shoulders in tangled snowy curls. He did not appear to be enjoying the rich illumination, which was no wonder. At a closer look, one would see that his eyes were completely irisless due to a rare congenital an congenital anomaly. Irisless, due to a rare congenital anomaly, which made them hypersensitive to light, yet miraculous, miraculously, miraculous, miraculously, miraculous, mirac, mir yet miraculously, oh, mirac, mirac, you ever get that? You just got a normal word. It's a normal word. Miraculously. The, the patron saint of Paris holds the candle that miraculously relit. Miraculously? Maybe it's just me. You know how you hear like a word a lot? And it's just like, this just doesn't sound right in my head. Okay. Mira mira miraculous. Mir after the devil. To the next one. Miraculously. See? <laughs> Even that sounded funny to me. For nine yeah. months, and miraculously... It's just a weird word. Okay, I'll get over it. It's just a weird word. Nope, no. <clears throat> excuse me. No, I don't say excuse me when I'm by myself. That's just for you guys. Uh, sensitive to light. Yet... Nope. <clears throat> hypersensitive to light, yet, miraculously, it did not impair the sharpness of his vision. The absence of the iris was well evened out by his penny-sized coal-black pupils. Pupils. The white prince placed his beringed, slim-fingered hands on the two human skulls. One peculiar... <coughs> human skulls. One peculiarly bigger than the other that completed the armrests of his throne and swept his mesmerizing black eyes over the quiet rows of his faithful subjects whose fanatic eyes followed his every move. Gale's apprehensive look was fastened on his pseudo-royal master as well. This one check beringed. What? Not in the dictionary. Well, that's weird. Making audiobooks is fun. Don't worry, it really is. Okay. Oh, be ringed. Ha <laughs> ha, that would be why. 
deranged. Silly. This is why we check stuff. <clears throat> this is why we check. Black pupils. The white prince placed his beringed, slim-fingered hands on the two human skulls. There. Oh, no, we just... Oh. Yeah. Gale wondered if there could be anything less human than this sick, twisted joke of a man towering above the silence and folded auditorium on his throne made of... Ooh. Well, Gale wondered if there could be anything less human than this sick, twisted joke of a man towering above the silence and folded auditorium on his throne made of time-darkened silver and yellow human bones and lavishly bejeweled with rubies and pearls. Hollow, bloodless cheeks, fame-thirsty, glaring eyes, godlike high forehead, scornful curve of feminine... forehead, scornful curve of feminine raspberry lips, all complemented by a frame of chalk-white coils of hair and fair, as if flower-powdered, eyebrows and eyelashes. He was still in the full bloom of his greedy eighteen, an outcast boy playing king and living a fantasy, his arrogance and lust for power compensating for his absence of royal background. The White Prince granted two slow nods of courtesy to his right and left, in turn to Lockie and Anna, who were now standing on either side of his pompous pedestal, and Lockie and Anna seated themselves in the scarlet satin padded armchairs that stood behind them. The Prince slowly ran his vain eyes across the crowded hall once again and waved his slender hand down imperatively. <clears throat> imperatively giving the audience his permission to take their seats as well. As everyone took their places, he broke the silence reliv reliving places. He broke the silence relieving the audience's breathless expectation. Okay, now we get to the character. So we do a quick double check of what he sounds like. Good. I heard it, you didn't. But... <clears throat> <clears throat> our loyal brothers and our loyal sisters. His metallic, clear voice rang in the quiet of the hall. His speech flow unhurried and steady. Was it that un... I'm just checking if that's what I call that unhurried and steady. Yes. And steadied. Determined to sound kingly as he was, but lacking the regal. Regal. He was, but lacking the regal upbringing. He tried hard to make up for it with royal wheeze and sublime language, although could not help but let an occasional substandard phrase slip in here and there. Just want to check something out. Just making sure that the joints where I've done a little bit of editing are going to sound okay once it's actually run through my effects chain. So it sounds good. <clears throat> we are gathered here today to celebrate the long-awaited news. He paused, letting the crowd roar in excitement and continued as soon as the uproar hushed down. Our most valued and eminent subjects shall be honored today, for they... He motioned with his dainty hands down at Lockie and Anna, who were sitting in their armchairs inflated with pride. In the name of our kingdom's prosperous future, 
discovered the whereabouts of our deeply hated foe, the so-called promised girl. Girl. His mouth curved in a triumphant grin as he let another deafening tide of malicious cheering roll across the hall. All right, that's probably long enough. That's more a longer section. That's what it's like doing an audiobook. So enjoy. Let me know if you got any questions. Audiobooks with Kyle Snyder. <laughs>